What is up everyone, Stonepost34, bringing you some Black Ops 2 on the Xbox. My last video uh, was getting a little bit of hate. Everyone thinks I'm a PlayStation fanboy or whatever, so I decided to jump on Xbox and, and play a little bit yesterday. So I did, and I do want to backpedal a little bit on my statement over the Xbox One controller. And that's what this video is about. It's about the Xbox One controller and the 40 improvements that they made to the Xbox One controller over the Xbox 360 controller. And I'm going to break them down for you. I'm going to break them down into two categories. I want to talk about the aesthetics or ergonomics of the system, of the controller, and then also I want to talk about the new technology they've integrated. So I apologize that I kind of took a broad uh, stroke and just said, oh, they really haven't done a lot just because they don't have a, a D-pad on it. So anyway, let's start with the ergonomics. Um, according to the CEO of the peripheral division for Xbox, they conducted hundreds of user tests, gaming, uh, they've talked to professional gamers, and here's what they've done. You know the battery door on the back, that has been fully integrated into the back of the controller, so we don't have that bulky mass on the back, so that'll be nice and smooth on the back. Also, uh, if you have an Xbox controller, I'm looking at mine right now, you have the little screw holes that are on the back, those will be gone. They said, you know, for a typical gamer that's gaming one to two hours, it's not a big deal, but if you have someone that's gaming, you know, five to eight hours a day, which I can't imagine doing that, uh, it, it does start to uh, wear on the hand. So they fully integrated that. Let's talk about the thumbsticks. The thumbsticks are a soft rubber. The old ones were a little tall. These are gonna be a little bit shorter. Um, and they talked about the rubber just being a, a little bit softer and, and easier on your thumb. Uh, they will be concave. Uh, Pl PlayStation 3 is convex, uh, but these will be concave D-pads. Now, the rumble motors, I turn mine off. I don't know. You let me know if you guys do. I turn mine off when I game. I find it annoying just when they're constantly, when I'm getting shot and I'm trying to aim, especially if you're using a sniper rifle or anything like that. Um, I just turn them off for Call of Duty. I don't even use them, but they said they made them smaller. They sit back a little bit uh, towards the bottom of the handles. They're just a, it's basically like a, a wobbly motor that just, once it's triggered, uh, makes a vibration. And that guy got turned on. <laughs> and uh, so they made them smaller, but they said they're a lot, they're a lot more sensitive. So basically, uh, they talked about, you know, if you're driving down a gravel road in, in some game, or you're shooting a sniper rifle versus a bazooka, there's gonna be a total different feel to the controller. So, um, you know, I think that's good. I think that's uh, something they needed to, to do because I just turn it off. It's just annoying to me. So maybe I'll leave them on. Okay, let's talk about the technology. This is the cool stuff. I should have probably started with this first. I hope you made it this far in the video. The technology. Okay, so on the front of the, or I should say the top of the controller is a US, micro USB, um, basically where you can turn your controller into a wired controller or you can unplug it and it will turn on your wireless features. The reason they did this is because they talked to pro gamers and we're talking milliseconds, milliseconds of reaction time. But pro game gamers use wired uh, controllers. So they made it so you can actually put the wire in and turn off the wireless feature. But let's go to the wireless feature. They have increased the bandwidth by 20 times, 20 times more bandwidth. So that, I mean, I don't know what the bandwidth is now, but I mean, if you can increase it by 20 times, I think definitely you're going to see a huge improvement uh, in the response time. And that, with that, they said, with that increase in the bandwidth, they had reduced latency by 20%. So. You know, I don't know. Do you guys feel it? I don't really feel it when I go from... Because I do have a wired controller and a wireless for the Xbox. I don't really feel it. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think on that. Um, this is the coolest part. This just shocked me when they said it. Okay, so the on the front of every controller, there's going to be two LEDs. Infrared LEDs that sit on the front of the controller. Why? Well... If you have a user set up and the Kinect recognizes your face, and I can just imagine a couple guys hanging out on a couch playing Call of Duty or something, taking turns. You pass it over to your buddy, it recognizes his face, realizes he has the controller, and it changes to all his settings. Fully integrated. There's no, oh, I, you know, I'd like a 8 sensitivity versus a 15 sensitivity. Or, um, you know, I've got 
uh, tactical layout or whatever it is. It you know I'm just I know I'm talking Call of Duty terms here, but whatever game it is, it will fully recognize the user and basically change the settings on the go. And that to me, I was just like that. <laughs> how cool is that? I mean, I don't know if PlayStation is going to have anything like that, but for Xbox to do that, I mean, I think they're really ahead of the game. And uh, I don't know. The last thing they talked about is the X, Y, A, B buttons, and then the Xbox button. They're going to have a little bit different feel to them. I mean, it's not going to change the actual play with them, but they'll have a different feel. They said that the characters on the buttons actually float. They look suspended, and they sh showed an, uh, a picture of it. Yeah, they look like they're floating up in the air, and it's they're clear instead of having the solid blue and yellow and red and green backgrounds. They're just clear. And then also the skin of the controller, like the Xbox, is uh, it's just a hard plastic right now. And the Xbox One controller is going to have um, a more of a grip, I don't know if rubber is the right term, uh, term but uh, like a more of a tactical feel to it. So you can, it will hold in your hand a lot better. Uh, so guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm kind of eating crow on this. I, <laughs> like I said, I glossed over Xbox in my comparison video and just said, well, you know, they haven't really done anything for the interface. But I'll tell you what, that Xbox Connect interface, that is some, that's cool beans, man. I'm, I'm, I don't know, the more I read about this, the more I'm researching this, I'm, I don't know, I'm leaning towards Xbox. I really am. And um, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate because I'm a PlayStation guy, but some of these features, I don't know. I don't know if PlayStation's going to get get on board with uh, with dedicated servers. And I know someone said in my last video, oh, dedicated servers, PlayStation will have them. Well, if that's the case, why aren't they talking about it? <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe that. That can't be, you know, because that's a huge selling factor uh, to have dedicated servers. I mean, Call of Duty, and that's the other thing. I'm a Call of Duty player. Call of Duty was built uh, for the Xbox. So, you know, then they migrated over and everything sucks for like a month until they get it figured out. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. Um, I'm not a fanboy either way, but I'm just kind of bringing you the facts. Take care as always. This is Stone Post 34.